It's the two best teams in the country head to head in the semi final of the FAI Carlsberg Cup. League leaders Cork City take on treble chasing Derry, who haven't lost in 25 games since Cork beat them here. The battle for the league is put to one side for tonight only. Last meeting was a classic. Let's hope there are more fireworks tonight. It's the first FAI Carlsberg Cup semi-final. Cork against Derry. We're live from Turner's Cross. Good evening. Welcome to the Cross. It's been very wet here, thankfully dry now. And this pitch behind me, probably the most talked about piece of grass in sports circles in the country over the last 12 hours or so. There was an under-19 international played here last night. The Republic of Ireland won by four goals to one, but they did big damage to the pitch, there was a lot of rain, a lot of flooding and the pitch tore up very, very badly but the ground staff here have done a pretty remarkable job to get it looking like that but it will cut up during the course of the evening. I'm delighted to say we're joined by two former FAI Cup winners, Felix Healy and Roddy Collins. Guys, it's great to have you both here with us tonight. Felix, let me start with you. The pitch, we know John O'Flynn, we just heard in the last while that John O'Flynn has been ruled out with a recurrence of his groin injury. Now, that may have nothing to do at all with the pitch. It could have happened anyway. But there is a concern for the players tonight about injuries and stuff. There certainly is. First of all, I would have to say, given the week that we've had in Irish football, it's probably the icing on the cake of what's happened in the last 24 hours. It's been a dreadful week for Irish football. Uh, beginning with the referee, the officials not turning up on Monday. Yeah. The way the Brian Carer, the backup has been handled. Could have been handled a lot better. Mm. To play in under age game here last night yeah. it's ludicrous yeah. absolutely ludicrous and it's going to determine this match tonight yeah. there are a number of players on both sides John O'Flynn, O'Flynn as you've just said hasn't made it he didn't look good warming up and we were surprised that he was actually in the lineup yeah. he's been pulled from the lineup there are a number of players on both sides who we know have struggled coming yeah. up into this yeah. match and this pitch if anybody is in the 100% will be found out tonight Rudy, what's your, your feeling on this match tonight? Derry on this great run, of course. Cork, last team to beat them here, what was it, 25th of May? You know, it, yes, it's a lot yeah. on the line tonight. Well, it's different tonight, Darla, because as Felix said, the state of the pitch will determine the selection of the two teams. When the fixture came out, you knew you were coming to walk yeah. on the on this fixture. You know, you sat down, you got a feel for it, you got a picture of the game. And you looked at midfield, you talked about balls being passed through. Yeah. And he'll be strong in the middle of the park, he'll be confident yeah. to take the game forward. But with yeah. the pitch now, it's going to turn into a war of attrition. It's going to be the, 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 the team physically stronger on the night will win it. And we know that Derry have silverware already. They're going for the treble. Won the League Cup not so long ago. And important for them to get a piece of silverware on the table. Well, when so much has been made of, of, of Derry's run and the treble in, in recent weeks, they've gone 25 matches unbeaten. They're a very, very confident bunch of lads. Yeah. Speaking to them before the match, and indeed the manager and assistant manager, I was surprised at how confident they are of getting a result tonight. They feel that it's there for the taking. Yeah. The pitch, they're annoyed about the pitch, but they, they know there are no excuses. Sure. Let's go, work as hard as we can. And the silverware has, has given them that wee bit of extra belief yeah. that sometimes, no matter how well you're playing or whatever, a trophy is a great psych psychological help in any dressing room. Give me a prediction, Felix, briefly. I think we could be back in Derry on Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday, OK. And we'll see how it goes. Roddy, your, your thoughts. Who's going to win it? I can't see a Derry win. Cork or a replay. OK. Great atmosphere building here at Turner's Cross. Thank you, lads, for the moment. Let's join our big match commentary team as the teams are about to come out. Pat Morley and first George Hamilton. Thank you, Derry. Yes, Turner's Cross set. If the pitch doesn't look the part, at least that's the only thing that's wrong because the rest is just right. The atmosphere is superb. The uh, Derry fans uh, have made the journey in some numbers too, but uh, these, of course, will be those making the most noise. The fans of Cork City, who are uh, the last team, as you've heard, to have beaten Derry back in May. Then Derry set off on this remarkable run, and they come into this in seven straight wins, 25 matches unbeaten. What is the role for uh, George O'Callaghan and Dennis Behan tonight? That's the question for Pat Morley, Dennis Behan, coming in instead of the... 
the, the, the injured striker, John O'Flynn. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, obviously, the, the Roddy and uh, Felix picked up on that, that John has pulled the groin strain and uh, it's been there for a couple of weeks. And Dennis is coming in, and obviously it's a great opportunity for Dennis. I think tonight um, George will play behind behind Dennis and in front of the, um, the midfield, something very similar that Gary Becker will do for Derry, and I'm sure these two players will have a, a big bearing in the game. Yes, uh, the John O'Flynn and Neil Fenn will be the first choice strikers for Cork City, but neither of them are there. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean, you know, this is this is where it comes down to having the, the strongest squad. I mean, you know, we go back to it again. Dennis Bean is there, he's come in, it's a huge opportunity for him. I think that the, the big match winners tonight, I think, will be people like Georgia Callan, the two wingers for Cork. Obviously, Gary Beck will have a huge say tonight. The young lad up front for Derry will have a huge say. And, I mean, again, Derry, Derry have a very big player as well on the bench in Pat McCord. So, I mean, they can always bring him on it if times are needed. OK, that's Mark McChrystal, who's in at the back for Derry City in place of the suspended Clive Delaney. He partners the captain, Peter Hutton. They'll uh, also be looking to the man in front, uh, Gary Beckett. The Fermanagh man scored in two of the rounds for Derry, a goal against Shelburne, and the winner against Shamrock Rovers. So he is up front along with Mark Farron. Again, we can see the team there. I mean, you, you look at it, it's, it's sort of very similar formation to what, what Cork are going to play with. Beckett sort of in behind the front man, Farron, and in front of the, the four in midfield. Again, as the people have picked up here, the pitch, it, it's not going to lead to probably good football tonight, and it'll be like a real sort of old, as if I can say that word, League of Ireland game, and it's going to come down to who wants it the most and who's got the character to win it. Well, there are a couple of interesting points about uh, this. I have to say it's going to be an old-fashioned League of Ireland game. Well, it's going to be an old-fashioned cup tie rolled into that as well, I should think, because there's a significant fact here. If Dirk Cork were the last team to have beaten Derry City, who are on seven straight wins going into this, 25 unbeaten, but they've won only two of their last ten meetings with Cork City, and the last time they beat Cork City in Turner's Cross was in an FAI Cup semi-final three years ago by the scoreline of 1-0. And if I remember correctly on that given night, I think Alan Goff made a great save from John O'Flynn in the penalty. So, um, you know, here's hoping we get a cracker and um, made a best team win. Here, here. Damien Hancock has made the trip from Dublin to take charge of this FAI Cup semi-final. And Cork City in the green and white against the Candy Stripes in red and white. Cork City will kick off. Attacking their favourite shed end. Under the lights on the south side of Cork. Officials happy, both goalkeepers happy, 11 aside, the mathematics have been done, the game is on. And Cork City immediately attempt to make some ground at the right with Roy O'Donovan. Crunching challenge there from Farron. Certainly wasn't going to miss there. Straight into George, he knew what he was doing, but again, we've just seen it straight away. The pitch has played a huge part in the very first part of this game, so you know, I know, I know we can't blame it all night long, but I'm sure it's going to play a huge part. So, hopefully, they can keep and get the ball down and play it. Of course, it's a pitch that's going to affect uh, the fans of both teams. And here's George O'Callaghan, spread wide for Dan. Left back Murphy. In fact, he's not left back Murphy. I see Dan, Danny Murphy as opposed to Dan Murphy in the back four for Cork City. And on the right side, it's Liam Walker. Scrappy enough to start of the attempt to come to terms with both conditions and indeed the the atmosphere in a tie like this, there is so much at stake. Now these two, the top two teams in Ireland at the moment, Cork City lead Derry City at the top of the Aircom League on goal difference alone, but they do have a game in hand. David Ford at the Derry City goal, his first touch. That was Colin 
O'Brien. Torres goes straight out of play. Throws to Delhi City. I think it's just been a very, very quiet start, George. I mean, surprisingly enough for a cup match, it, it, it is like this, you know. But um, again, you know, these sides, both these teams love to play football and they're not getting the chance to do it, I don't think, tonight. But they just got to grin and bear it now and, and uh, deal with the conditions. So, Brian for Horgan. That's for Donovan. Dan Murphy, already the captain. Finally resolved that tongue twister by own making. Murray and Murphy in the back four. Four. This is the Murphy. Dan. Ford thought about coming, then thought better of it, and George O'Callaghan just uh, been marshaled through there by Hargan. Enabled the uh, Derry City goalkeeper to get on the ball. In. Trying to thread one through and doing so almost successfully. Good goalkeeping by Michael Devine. Kieran Martin was the man on the way through. But Devine was swiftly off his line to make the save. Well, this is something that Derry, I'm sure, of hand that Kieran Martin makes some great runs in midfield. And obviously the playmaker Gary Beckett picking up the ball in midfield. And that's gone for goal kick. Here you see it now, Gary Beck has just dropped off into midfield for the lovely little ball and Kieran Martin being a great run and not picked up by any of the Cork City midfielders and that's something that Cork City will have to look at but again it's Gary Beck that you know he's the, he's the player that's going to make this team pick for Derry City tonight. Bennett, O'Brien, as Bean who arrived at the ground not expecting to play. Through to Bennett. Donovan, helped on by O'Callaghan, throw to Cork. Joe Gamble, O'Brien retrieving. Danny Murphy, Spian, Murphy. Well, that uh, was an unkind bounce from Murphy. On the right side, Roy O'Donovan was furious that the pass didn't come, but it certainly wasn't a very easy one to execute given the underfoot conditions. No, absolutely not. But I mean, you know, they're just going to have to do that. I mean, what I've noticed already is that Peter Hutton's already pushed, trying to push the dirty back four out because it seems that they, they're falling too deep and giving Corksby far much uh, space coming up forward. So, you know, I can see this already in the dairy team that they need to start pushing up. Crystal's gone forward. In the end, it was a header by Mark Farron and a goal kick to Cork City. It's not a bad corner, and when Farron has made good space, it's probably a half a chance, but, you know, he tried to get his head around it, and maybe he probably better off trying to volley, but, you know, in fairness to him, he's, he's uh, he tried to be confident and have a shot. distance of that kick it beat Hutton bounced favorably for Eddie McCallion who hasn't managed to get it away O'Callaghan 
And there's the cross for O'Donovan. Oh, it just wouldn't come down for Bean. And a brave block by Hutton. And oh, that's a let off for Derry City. Well, the first moment of real danger, and it was Cork City's Eddie McCallion unable to deal with the clearance. And O'Callaghan won it back for Cork. And when it came in the middle, well, Bean was unable to get there, and Hutton made a brave block. And now it's Kieran Martin. He's pushed over by Alan Bennett. The free kick to Derry City. But this is how close Cork came. Well, here it is, George Roy's run up and get, made a header. Dennis Bean has missed it, and George Cannon's come back and just missed kicked him. And it's a great chance, and it's all come from probably McCallion's um, unluckiness with the pitch out on the right-hand side. But it's a chance, and it hasn't been taken, so now the, the defensive ball is on Cork City here with a free for Derry City. Now to take it, Killian Brennan, the player on the right, also with him. Kevin Deary, it's Brennan who's taken it, round the back goes Hutton to knock it down, Beckett! And it's blocked there by Danny Murphy. Another corner to Derry City. Well, there you go, George. Two people were speaking about in the, in the space of two minutes. Gary Beckett and George Callan both have two great chances. And, you know, this is a great free kick in. Goes to the back post. Knocked down. Beckett's judged it. Great strike and well blocked by Danny Murphy. The pressure remains on Cork City. Fists away. And again, a good block by Joe Gamble this time. But uh, the ball just not running on this glue pot surface and Derry still in the possession. Devine, the goalkeeper, did well with the fists there from that corner. Now it's O'Callaghan. The intervention of McChrystal meant that Derry got the ball back. Trying to dig it out in there in that midfield, but uh, it was an offside uh, spotted by the assistant on the far side. And Damien Hancock has... Uh, awarded the free kick to Cork City. Well, for the first five minutes we were sort of a bit quiet because there wasn't sort of an awful lot happening, but in the last two minutes it's been an awful lot with both George and Gary Beckett having great chances, you know, and hopefully that will lead into the rest of the game now. Yeah, throw to Cork. Callahan. It's Bennett. O'Brien. Important interception that by Barry Malloy. And Malloy plays it forward. Oh, that's a foul, surely. Farron brought down by Dan Murray. A free kick to Derry City. I think Dan will be very lucky if he gets away with a yellow card here because Farron has actually done, done very well here. He's twit turned him. Yes, Dan is very lucky to get away with the don't be carded there. So maybe the referee is a small bit lenient earlier on. Shown themselves to be proficient in the air already in this game. This time it's Malloy to take the free kick on the air. Shorter option. Killian Brennan back for Beckett. O'Brien did well again. To get his body in the way. O'Callaghan. It's Malloy once more. O'Callaghan still battling. Gamble goes in. It's Martin who tries to get there for Derry, but the ball crosses the line. It's a throw in the court. Very impressive with Derry with the two free kicks. They've been so different, George, early on. I mean, and Gary Beck has been involved in both of them. So, you know, this is something that Cork City will need to keep their eye on. Ryan. Murphy. Simon Bennett. Campbell. Challenge. Malloy, but pushed in the back by Barry Malloy. Free kick against the Derry City player. There's a tackle again, George. Probably a bit unlucky there because, you know, he probably, probably, they probably consider that a tackle from behind. But, you know, I think the referee is giving um, Joe Malloy a talk to there and he's given no talk to Dan Murray. So, you know, it's a small bit of inconsistency by the referee there. figure of Dan Mur Murphy, the Cork City captain. Bean. He's fouled. Peter Hutton thought the free kick had been awarded to him. He applauded the referee. But the uh, free kick has been awarded against him. Won by Dennis Bean, the man who didn't expect to be in the team. But uh, the injury to their talisman, John O'Flynn, who had scored in every round of the Cup so far, meant that Bean was called in after the warm-up. 
Now he's won this free kick. Looked a bit of a soft free kick, but I mean, obviously, gives an opportunity to Cork City, and there's a few people here who can strike the ball, especially Dan Murray and um, Dennis Bean. So, you know, I think they'll be looking at the try and hit the target from this. Dan Murray is looking very eager. Hands and hips there. Tall man from up from the back. Four in Derry's wall. And they went for a variation of the theme. It's Malloy. And Murray is there. Derry struggling to get it away and have it succeeded. Murray still up with the attack. Now Danny Murphy. Donovan. Good ball. Again, it's a very good ball from Danny Murray. He's not the great ball to Roy Donovan with the cross has been blocked. But just looking at the free kick again there, George, I mean, you know, it was, it was a very poor effort when you think that they're only 18 yards out from goal and not make the keeper make a save. Murray forward once more. Here comes the corner. Four under some pressure at his near post. The ball is loose. Murray wins it back. And it's another corner to call. And it's a very good free kick in, or a corner kick in for me and Kearney. Georgia Cannon has gone from post to get a touch on it, and, and David Ford, I think, has got blocked from a few of his own defenders. So, now I think they need to put a few more of those in if Parker to break the duck lock here. So suggested penalty area, as always, as the corner comes in, invitingly hung onto the crossbar, but on this occasion, just too close to David Ford. And the early release for Beckett. Kevin Deary now for Derry City. Beckett once more, and Deary. Looking for Farrans in behind the defence, but he's offside. That looked very tight and there, he, George. He's going to be. Is he going to be booked for that? That's what the. Uh, that's what the regulation now states. But uh, Damien Hancock is saying, "I will book you if you do that again. You're not supposed to kick the ball away." Well, I think he's probably a small bit frustrated because he, he might have been very unlucky there because I think he's peeled away very, very well and come to the back post and the Cork City defenders haven't picked up. And he's a, he's a good set to forward and he's been scoring an awful lot of goals for Derry. One of them in the cup against Kildare County. The previous now. Free kick awarded against the Crystal. Ready to take. Got for the short option again, Liam Carney. But as Mark arrived at pace, Carney hastened with the shots and it went wide. That's and here's the free kick again. It's a short ball to Liam Kearney. And you know, Kieran Martin has done very, very well. But I, I don't think Alan Bennett and Dan Murray will be too happy there after coming up from the back four. And will probably be very frustrated and probably have a few words with George O'Callaghan on that because these are the type of things that you need to put the ball inside the box and make it come. It's forward again by O'Donovan. Retrieves at the expense of a throw. He's done very well there, Peter Hutton, because, you know, again, there's a ton of it all night. The pitch is starting to hold the ball up, and he was probably expecting to skip a bit further and it just held up, and he's done really well, but that's the experience of Peter Hutton. Conan O'Brien. Murphy, Murphy, rather. Here's by Deary. Time to throw is to Derry. Beckett's up near the halfway line. It comes short now for the throw. This is he. It didn't quite work what he was attempting to execute now. A burst through by Liam Carney, which ends in a, an injury for a Derry City defender. Bennett. 
out of play for attention to come on from Peter Hunt. Jerry just, City's captain. I think he's just he just picked up an injury there from, from Liam Carney coming across the ball, but I think the pitch is probably an awful lot more to play in that than um, the actual thing it is. I mean, here it is again, you know, Liam has just come through. Yeah, Peter just gone over. Yeah, I mean, it's much of a muchness there, really. I mean, the ball was there to be won, and I think you, we can blame the pitch, but it's just one of those things. Yeah. So, attention for the Derry City captain. Moment of respite. Liam Carney coming in from his wing, causing problems for Peter Hunt. Which uh, hopefully will be resolved. Peter's experienced enough. I think he's um, just having a little rest for himself. You know, he's getting to the age where he sort of needs a few rests on the pitch, and uh, I'm sure he'll be fine. And I'm sure he'll uh, come back in uh, full fettle to uh, look after his troops from the back. He's a good pro. Yes, he has to leave the pitch, having received attention. We throw in on the near side. Beaten to it by Bennett. And that bounce favoured Derry City in, in the first of Kevin Deary. There's no one there in red and white. And so it's Murray sending it long. Being as one to throw it. He's, he's had a fairly good start. I mean, he's put himself a boat and he's, he's got a few free kicks in the right areas. And in fairness to him, he's chasing on a long ball here and, and he made a, got a throw to nothing ball. So, you know, good work from starting Dennis. Man. Danny Murphy invites them to move away and he'll throw it long. And they did move away, but he throws it to George O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan, maybe uh, the angle he wanted was for an on-rushing teammate. I think George is trying to make a few things happen there, but it was very interesting there when Peter Hutton was coming back onto the pitch. In fairness to me, the old throw, he ran along where um, Danny Murphy was taking the throw in, so it held the whole thing up. So fair play to Peter Hutton. It's Eddie McCallion. Eddie. Pressured by Carney. And here's Carney on the ball. Good defensive play. Harry Malloy cracked him back, saying that he should have got the throw in. Just bounced over O'Callaghan, out of play, goal kick. I think one of the things we need to pray that it doesn't happen tonight, George, is that it doesn't rain because, you know, the pitch looks as if it's getting worse and worse and worse and it's really cutting up and it's not going to suit these two teams, you know, because they love playing football and it, it's just not helping the game at all. And, um, you know, we just hope that it stays like it is and with a bit of luck even at half time that the grounds have to come out and roll it a bit because, it's, uh, you know, people at home I don't think will realise how um, poor it is. Friday night on Side, a long way from the Maiden City, but they're having fun. One would uh, increase for them no end if they were to get on the score sheet. Offside against Farron. Murray, O'Callaghan, away from Deary, away from Beckett, back from Murphy. Lay off by Bean. O'Callaghan. And he's beaten Hutton and Bean's there. Bean with the header, but how well O'Callaghan did. But he really had to beat the pitch as well as the player over there, and he did so. Yeah, he's done extremely well there. He's picked up the ball and he's gone around them. You see it here again. I mean, he's done really, really well. Dennis Bean's done exceptionally well getting to the front post. And a fair to David Ford, he'd have covered all the way. But it was, it was good movement from both George and Dennis Bean there. Morgan. He's lost out to Farron. Beckett. Gamble, Bean. Gamble, 
inviting Carney to run onto it over the head of McCallion. And McCallion got the tackle in. Throw into Cork City. Sorry, George. There's a chance. Great skill by George Callan. Turned inside out. And in fairness, Dennis Bean, he has made a great run there. And he's been a bit unlucky. But, um, you know, we've been saying it at the start. George Callan and Gary Beckett. These are the two people that are going to decide this tie, I think, tonight. Back to him. Murphy's throw. Murphy again. Back from Murray. Missed kick. Paul not where he expected it to be when he kicked it. And the winner there. on the charge well defended by McChrystal well it's a big test for him tonight but uh, Cork I'm sure rue the fact that their first choice strikers neither of them available Fenn is on the bench O'Flynn still out having missed the last game like the last game that Dennis Behan started for Cork City before injury laid him low was the 2-0 victory over Derry the last match Derry lost Maybe he, and not O'Flynn, in these circumstances, is the talisman. We will see. Campbell, it's Beckett. Cut out by Murray. Miss kick by Brennan. It's Campbell. Forward by Malloy. Campbell again bring it under control. Did well to dig it out of a, an awkward situation. It's Carney. Well, he lost his footing at the crucial moment in his attempt to get past McCallion, and that was pulled out of the pitch. And these criticisms of the pitch are in no way directed at the ground staff of Cork City. It's at the wisdom of playing a football match in October, the night before an FAI Cup semi-final. That's a foul by Hagen, and this is going to be the first card of the night. I think it's just a cynical, it's a cynical little challenge, and you know he probably deserves to be booked, even though Sean Hagen probably say he doesn't deserve it, but I think it is. It's, it's definitely a yellow card. You know? Free, like the sound of his own voice there speaking to Sean Hagen, George. The point was clear that the shrill blast of the whistle meant the yellow card was coming. Here it is again, it's just the ball knocked up to... Uh, oh, just missed it there again. Well, the free kick awarded. Well, Donovan none the worse. That will be Carney to take. And on too close to Ford. It's caught by Bennett. But uh, the centre half knew he was going to commit a foul if he, if he carried through with the challenge. The advantage was played and the, the game has moved back into the Cork City half. Dave Ford has just done very well there. He's just shown everybody who's passed. I mean, it's probably a, it's probably a poor kick by um, Liam Carney, but in fairness, Dave Ford he came out and came out and threw a quick ball up to Gary Beckett. And I think this is what um, Barry will try to do with Cork when they're um, attacking all the time. You know? Free kick taken by Hutton. And again by Malloy. And nobody in red and white able to make ground through there. Back on the pitch. I think, that, I think that's Roy probably just come back to Sean Hargan to say maybe you've kicked me once already, so um, just be aware that I haven't gone away. Stephen Kenny and uh, Damien Richardson animated on the touchline. 
feeling things could be going better for their respective teams. Target forward. The goalkeeper Devine is out, but he hasn't got there first. Well, I don't know what they were thinking there, but uh, there was clearly going to be a, a Cork City throw if it went out, and Gary Beckett let it run out. Well, there you go. I think there shows the pitch in uh, all its beauty there tonight. The Mick Devine running out, thinking it was probably going to go away, and out for um, a goal kick, and it's held up, and, you know, the two, the two dairy lads got mixed up between the two. It's Malloy for McCallion now. It's Deary. Against Carney. Beckett! The back for Beckett! The shot from Martin, another great block in the Cork defence. It's McCallion. On for Deary. Chance to cross it again. Beckett trying to get in there. Handball, was it? Beckett! Oh, it's stopped by O'Brien and it's out for a corner kick. It was an awful lot happened there, George, and I mean, again, Gary Beck is involved in the whole lot of it. I think there could even be a good claim for a penalty in that, because it looked as if there was a handball in the middle of it. Here's the chance again. You know, it's Colin O'Brien used to stop back, he's left the back, and Colin O'Brien's got up and blocked it again. He's done exceptionally well twice. Been a lot of that at the Cork City defence. Here's the corner, it goes up! Oh, that was so close! Fantastic corner kick and a great run by Peter Hutton. Oh, he's very, very unlucky here, and I'm sure we see it again in the replay. It's a fantastic corner. Peter Hutton has made a great run from the edge of the box, got ahead of it, and just very, very unlucky. Just a corner, great corner, and great pace. Peter Hutton made a great run. Fantastic header, and it's just gone past the far post. I think Cox City might be looking at putting someone on the, one of the posts going forward here because they've been caught in a few corners now. to get a look at that, um, that replay again with the, the handball incident. I think it's, it could be very close to being a penalty there because it looked as if it was a penalty. That's uh, gone out and uh, there's uh, an injury there. There was a clash of heads. Referee immediately stopped the game, even though the ball had uh, gone out of play, just to let the attention come on. I think it's, it's just one of those uh, defenders and um, forwards incidents where they both go challenging and a little uh, stray elbow uh, comes into the equation. And normally the forward loses out because the defenders are a small bit more stronger than the forwards in the past. Brennan, Derry City's uh, left winger, attacking in his regular slot. And just uh, coming off the worst in the challenge. But he too is OK, if we fit to resume. The game will restart with the goal kick. Bennett. Nobody out left for him, so he had to go back to Murphy. Murphy, Bennett again, inviting the run from Carney. McCallion favoured here, and shepherds it out. Across the goal line, it's a goal kick. They're trying their best, George, both teams to try and play a bit of football, but, um, you know, I don't think it's going to be very easy for the night, so, you know, they just got to keep running and burying it here and trying to make it as uh, good a spectacle as they can, but, I mean, bottom line in all of this is you want to get to a cup final at the end of the day, and I don't think you're really too worried about it. Um, if it's a pretty game, would you get the result? That's how it looks at Turner's Cross on a Friday night with the FA Guy Cup final place at stake. Strada play brave for the right to, to meet whoever wins here on Sunday afternoon. That two is live on RTE2. 3.30 kickoff on Sunday afternoon, just like the old days. And the pitch here is just like the old days. <laughs> 
Um, there's been many happy days on a pitch like this, George, and uh, you know it's a shame to see it because you know with what's happened with the summer football and all that, we've really seen some great um, soccer being played this year. You know, and I'm not saying that this isn't a great game because it's a cup tie, but it's just the pitch is going to play a terrible um, role in all of the, the bearings tonight. They all missed it. It's Hargan who heads it forward. And Joe Gamble, not the tallest man of the pitch, but effective with it. He's got it to Murphy, it's back to Murray. He's put under pressure by Farron. Now Devine has to scamper, but uh, there's no real trouble for him. Beckett has arrived. He's still managed to find Carney. Murphy. That's McChrystal's head. Joe Gamble. Gamble. Burst his way through there. Eventually it was McCallion's tackle. Now, Deary. And Bennett has failed to connect. And Farron has won the throw in for Derry City. Could be a forwards night as well tonight, George, with the ball popping all over the place. So I think what Gary Beckett there with Mick Devine with his ads, as we call him in the industry, the swinger leg, he's, he's dead right to chase him in because he could bobble up at any time. Joe Gamble. Liam Carney. Support there from Danny Murphy. On a better night, maybe. That was the call to play. Bean, chest dive for O'Callaghan. Oh, that had them rising in anticipation. Bean was the target man from the free kick. The knockdown for O'Callaghan, and he feels he should have done better. It's a great ball in from um, Danny Murray, and it's just it's just on George. And he's, he's hit that, and he's, been, he's actually very unlucky because he, it's a great technique to try and do something like that. And um, you know, it's far he didn't hit the target, but it's. Uh, signs again for Foxley and again Dennis Bean has come in for John O'Flynn he's, he's using his, um, his weight if that's the one for a better word up front at the moment one by Murphy it's O'Brien Hopkins header Malloy assisted by Deary now McCallion for the keeper On by Bean, O'Callaghan, just wouldn't come down for him though, he was trying to get away to Carney, but it wouldn't come down, he could get the pass away, Deary, it's Murray, Ford has come from his goal, on by Murray, O'Brien for Gamble, always stretching under pressure from Malloy, Beckett, Hargan has joined the attack. The header on towards Farron. Uh, uh, Brennan, rather. It's now with Hargan once more. Uh, he's tackled by Roy O'Donovan. And it's a throw to Derry City. It's going to be sat in conditions, George. And I think even in the second half, when we see some of the substitutions coming on, they could play a huge part in this um, tie yet. Because you can see some of the players even trying to get back. Is they're finding it very, very difficult on the foot. how Cork City defend this I mean for the last three corners there you've been very unlucky so again they've got to be very resolute in defence here but because Peter Hutton again is lining up at the edge of the box and he's caught a lot of problems in the last two corner kicks here's the corner Hutton at the back post oh that was very nearly there and O'Brien gets it away 
Michael Devine making a magnificent save. There you go again, George. I mean, Peter Hutton's come up, he's gone in the back post, he's, he's not been picked up. Ball's come into the back post, he's won the header, just a deflection off, and Mick Devine has made a great save again there to keep it out. This time it's a throw. confidence in this because they're bringing an awful lot more players forward all the time. Corker playing this tactic of bringing Roy Donovan out wide in the right here in the hope that Mick Devine gets the ball and control to the far side of the pitch and use um, Roy's pace but they need to defend us better than the, than the last four. Here's Ian Swinger again. A little bit of pulling of the shirt on the part of Gary Beckett. I think it, yes indeed it was. And a free kick awarded against him. Not too far to the break. Stephen Kenny, a remarkable job he's done at Derry. 25 on beat. It's a fantastic record so far, but I mean, Stephen Kenny is a proven manager in League of Burnham with what he's done with Bohemians in the past. And I think you've probably got two of the most animated managers in, in the game on the, on the sidelines, so they'll probably be competing to see who gets more vocal during the match. Well, Donovan couldn't keep it in play. Throws oh, very hard in the tape. Just too long for Gary Beckett. but it's come down for Deary, challenged by O'Brien. Deary still has the ball. Did well to maintain the possession. Barry Malloy, on a better pitch that might have worked. Murray, Murphy, wouldn't come down for Bean. It's Malloy again. Deary. For me, he was falling before uh, he contacted Murphy. But the referee saw it as a foul against the Cork City defender. I think Danny Murphy there might have uh, tricked the referee a small bit as well. I think you're right in saying that he was falling, but uh, Danny's a cute little old pro, and um, I think he might have been caught the referee a tiny bit. There. Free kick from McCall Beckett. No foul there. Gamble. Carney dispossessed by Deary. Now it's with Martin. Kieran Martin in went far and defended by Beckett. It's come out to Malloy. Oh! Deflected off Farron. But uh, as well as deflecting it, it rather took the sting out of it. it took a small bit of sting out of it. But what, but what you can see is that Derry City are really pushing Cork City and, and challenging everything that's going back to Jew on the pitch. You know, and you, you, this is the main thing. As you can see it here, it's, it's a ball into the box. He's gone up well, he's been unlucky not to get it. I mean, it's broken down and he's just hit it because the pitch has been so bad. A little deflection, you know, pitch has probably defeated him there as well, George. Little under five minutes to the break. Yeah. Now Cork City have a chance to attack. George O'Callaghan has height, so too does Dennis Bean. Beckett's gone forward and Murray's gone forward. It's close to forward and straightforward enough for him to deal with. Well, it's two Cork City free kicks have gone straight into David Ford's hand, but in fairness to the keeper, he's commanding and the quick ball out again to Gary Beckett. And I think this is the direct tack a Derry tactic that we're seeing as Ford gets the ball from free kicks and he's just throwing it straight to Gary Beckett and making a quick break. Pitch conditions are not going to help in that, though. Malloy, Deary, 
Barnes just couldn't get there. Oh, he lost his footing at the crucial time. And it's in the end, it's Murray who, Murphy who clears. Bean trying to get through. Houghton stopped him in his tracks. Pitched up the ball, reaching the touchline. Foul by Neil Morgan. Again, we've seen it twice there. I think uh, 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 the, the far end of Alan Bennett got done by the pitch and then a great bit of defending by um, Peter Hutton at the back, showing all his experience to cover off Dennis Bean. Free kick from McChrystal. So Bryant, forward by McChrystal, it's Malloy, then goes McChrystal again, he's come down for Carney, straight at McCallion. Beckett, Bennett, it's Bennett who wins, throw in prevented, but now there'll be a throw into Derry City. Significant little statistic, maybe the fact that uh, in the corner count, Derry lead 5-2. In the corner count, Derry have been far more efficient than what they've done. I mean, three or four chances have come out of them. Possibly a handball, which I'm sure will be analysed at half-time. Brennan. And Brennan uh, is going to be booked for that. Go at uh, Neil Horgan as marker. It's probably a small bit of frustration as well creeping into the young lad because I mean, I mean he's not getting an awful lot tonight. And uh, you know, I mean Roy has covered back well and, and, and just shepherd the ball out for um, a, a goal kick. Um, but again, you know, it, it's, it's just one of those gonna be one of those nights. I think it's either gonna be a set piece or a, a silly mistake. I don't think we're probably gonna get a world class goal here tonight. So you know you just gotta dig in and grind out the result. minutes of the first half. And Bean won the free kick off McChrystal. They've taken it quickly. O'Donovan. O'Callaghan took a bit of a dive there. Back from O'Brien, but out of play. Play, stuck, stuck in the sand. O'Brien to the man in space, Danny Murphy. Too long for everybody. Keeper. Uh, and now says he's play acting. Uh, Damien Hancock has to come from a long way away to give the uh, yellow card to George O'Callaghan. Ford was uh, dwelling on it a bit, and uh, O'Callaghan came charging in. Uh, probably uh, a little bit too too energetic. Yeah, probably it's more of a too energetic by George, but it's one of those forward and goalkeeper things where the keeper is just sort of trying to play out the time and holding on it, and George has made a lunge on him, and probably the keeper's just put it away, and he's probably play-acting a bit on it. Yeah, there you go, George is getting probably a bit frustrated as well there, and he's just gone straight in, and, you know, David Ford has felt the sort of frustration in the shin of his bone there. One player who doesn't have to go off the pitch uh, if he receives attention for injury is a goalkeeper. So the game will await his return to fitness. Free kick for Derry City. And another couple of minutes to be added. the way 
away to uh, Deary. Foreman sending it forward. And uh, that's the end of the first half. No more than the couple of minutes added. George O'Callaghan's yellow card, the third of the night. Sean Hargan and Killian Brennan of Derry also booked some wonderful defensive play by Colin O'Brien, getting his body in the way of several Derry City efforts. David Ford also resolute in the Derry goal, but another fine save at the other end from Michael Devine, and a little bit of controversy too with the uh, suggestion of a half of a handball in the first half. Half time in the FAI Cup semi final. It's Cork City nil, Derry City nil. don't work without lines but our broadband does because our broadband is wireless there's no phone line no line rental no connection fee and no contract there's just broadband in a box for only 1895 a month call irish broadband or visit irishbroadband.ie age is a state of mind but cholesterol is another matter Flora Proactive has got plant sterols in it which helps remove cholesterol lowering it significantly it's clinically proven to work in just three weeks. Flora Proactive. Keep the beat. Find the new boat, boy. I'm Chuck Tanny, and I love quiz shows. Been on them all. One my own weight and candy, two weeks in Siberia, a luminous pink trophy. But the new quiz on my block is Buzz. That's Buzz. He's the ultimate host, my hero. Check the buzzer. Yeah! Loving your liver, baby. I see trees. 22 of the greatest hits of all time on one brilliant double CD. All of me. Starting this weekend in Ireland on Sunday, Legends and Divas. Don't miss CD1 of your sensational 22 track double album, free inside every copy of this weekend's Ireland on Sunday. Must be destroyed. Gotham isn't beyond saving. Batman begins out on two-disc DVD now. Hydrating with Powerade before sports is scientifically proven to improve performance. Prepare yourself. Prehydrate with Powerade. Fifty hazelnuts, a glass of skimmed milk. And just a hint of cocoa. Bringing me in, checking me out. Nutella, spread some happiness. Welcome back, well, the appropriately named Michael Devine, saving Cork here at Turner's Cross. A fantastic save. It's been a tough first half for both sets of players with the pitch the way it is. Nil-nil at half-time. Cork and Derry in the first FAI Carlsberg Cup semi-final. Felix and Roddy, Felix, your thoughts on that first half? Uh, 
probably what we we expected given the, the nature of the pitch. Uh, there's probably been more chances than mm -hmm. I think we would have expected. Uh, both teams have had opportunities. Uh, good defending and maybe one or two misses where people... I thought O'Callaghan for Cork had a couple of opportunities in the first 15 minutes. And I felt that if he showed a wee bit more conviction, yeah. Cork might be ahead. I think the Derry lads will be disappointed with the way they played in the first 45 minutes. They, it's unusual this year that they've been fighting amongst themselves on the pitch. Paul Hegarty's been very animated on the sideline. They wanted the players to up the effort. Yeah. I think the occasion has gotten to one or two of them. Uh, but I expect the second half, now that it's 0-0, I expect a better performance from them in the second half. Rod? Uh, I, I feel <coughs> Derry adopted to the conditions a lot better. I think their game plan is far better than Cox. I mean, they're playing a long ball, but they're playing on top of the two full-backs, and they're getting joy with the two wide players in the air. Uh, it's a game of set pieces, and I think on set pieces alone, Derry are far superior. Yeah. I mean, before the game, I felt Cork would be too strong in a physical battle. Derry, their plan is far superior to Cork. Cork just seemed to be playing off the cuff, you know, knock a long ball in, did one chance off George O'Callaghan, and it wasn't really constructed. It was a long ball and knocked down a snap shot. Yeah. Derry have played the set piece. I think this, the pace of Farron is going to trouble Dan Connor, and I think if Dan uh, Connor doesn't pick up. Uh, uh, Hutton for set yeah. pieces. Hutton's going to score a goal. He's broke off him three times. And I mean, the game of set piece and the air far, far sure. superior with the delivery yeah. uh, the dirty, to Derry Tim. I, I would be far happier if I was a Derry manager than I would have been with Damon Richard, to be honest. But it is a key part of uh, Derry's game, as we've seen before. Let's have a look at some uh, chances for Derry from open play, Felix. There were three chances in here and a big shout for a penalty as well. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I, I don't think there was any great uh, appeal by the Derry players at, at the time, and I think as, as the replays will, will show, it, it, it wasn't it wasn't a penalty. Uh, it was a great uh, a great chance for, for for Derry to open to open the, their account there. Uh, but to be fair to Cork, they defended really well, defended really well there. And there's one particular guy who threw himself when Gary Beckett maybe should have done better. That's that's one of those where it's ball to hand. Uh, and as you can see, I don't think there were too many of the Derry players. That was the corner that followed. Yeah, that's the one where I'm, I'm talking about the centre half. He's designated. You can see before the ball's delivered to pick up Hutton, and on a couple of occasions he's ball watched. The ball has been delivered. Hutton's got off and he hasn't picked him up. You know, and as Felix said, the defending around the box is good. Mm. They've been scrappy chance. They haven't been clear cut, but the defender has made them be scrappy chance. They've been down on it. You know, but one of them can ricochet on a good wet pitch. Actually, ricochet, you know? the defender from Cork has been very good in, in open play, like we saw there. But their defender from set pieces, Peter Hutton, said three or four very good yeah. chances yeah. with headers. And he's managed to get on the end of it, and nobody's been there to make a challenge or whatever. Divine, as we've seen, made a very good save at the end. We, we'll talk about uh, Peter Hutton in a minute, but let's talk about a Cork City opportunity. You, you made reference to this, the George O'Callaghan shot down yeah. on the other end, Roddy. Yeah, it was, you know, it was just a little ball. It was a ball knocked into the front pair, took it on his chest, and George, just a snapshot, got a little bit in front of it and just got his foot round it. It wasn't something that being constructed or building up, it was just yeah. a snapshot that hadn't been sustained in the game where Derry have had sustained pressure in that area and there was more opportunities for them types of strikes. Uh, you know, George will feel aggrieved that he didn't hit the tag, but it was difficult, it was behind him a bit. It was actually one of the few occasions actually where the Derry back four weren't weren't right, they weren't solid, O'Callaghan was saw was free. And we could see when the ball was laid up that the guy was free. And, and they were tucked in too far inside and left O'Callaghan free. It was a great strike, great strike. Yeah. We know, we've seen it for many, many years, uh, Peter Hutton, his threat from set pieces, and Michael Devine had to be alive to this. We had a little sneak preview of this already, his yeah. save. Yeah. Peter has been doing this since Adam was a small boy, as they say, <laughs> and uh, thank God he's been doing it. Yeah. Uh, uh, a great servant for Derry, and he's caught him all kinds of problems the first time. He's had three or four very good chances. Michael Devine made one very good save right under the bar towards yeah. the end. Yeah. And, and it's been, been very surprised that Cork have been so lax, knowing how dangerous Peter can be in that type of position. You see, they're giving Peter the opportunity to start his run. Yeah. They're starting as a group and they're picking up man for man. Before the ball is delivered, P P Peter Hutton's making a run. He should be body checked before he gets the first couple of paces off his run. Yeah. He should be body checked there. He's not. He's yeah. losing his force market. He's causing major problems. And uh, as we feel from here, it, it, the delivery is good as well, by the way. But and he's going to notch one if he's not picked up. Yeah, Roddy, John O'Flynn uh, is in the team, or not in the team. He had that groin problem again in the warm-up. Yeah. Uh, being had an opportunity midway through the first half. What did you think of this? 
but I mean, George is doing the best he can do. I don't think he's pumping up full there. I mean, that's we won't even call that one a chance. Okay. It's a decent delivery into the box. He's gone beyond it. He's not getting. I mean, you, you would be very surprised if he scored from that angle. It's, you know? it's coming yeah. behind him a bit. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be very. I mean, if you get that in around three, three or four yards out, you might sneak one in. But you know, the keeper's going to be very comfortable in that. But George, to me, is it would be better off dropping off the front, leaving it one up front, yeah. picking some pace up, and trying to put his, his front player being in because he's been totally ineffective. And when he has picked some ball up and he has opportunities to let it off or bring people into the game, yeah. he's over elaborating on the ball. You know, you can get away with that in a nice pitch in the middle of the park but not up front he's got to get the ball off quicker and yeah. honestly I mean, before the game I felt you know Cork mm. would be stronger but at this stage I think, I'd be, I think I'd be what Ronnie said at the Derry. start that Derry have adapted the conditions mm. a bit better I think Cork particularly with O'Callaghan and Gamble yeah. you can see them in times trying to play like you would on a decent pitch yeah. uh, and that's why I think Derry are a wee bit disappointed yeah. more disappointed that, that they not been at Cork a bit more. OK, guys, for the moment, thank you. Who would be a groundsman on a night like tonight? The pitch cutting up very, very badly. They've done a great job to get it in the shape it's in, but it's going to take more punishment in the next 45 minutes. Cork City nil, Derry City nil, half-time. Will we be at Brandywell again on Wednesday? Who knows? But we've had plenty of chances mm -hmm. in that first half. We're looking forward to a very <laughs> entertaining <laughs> second half, despite that playing surface. <laughs> Join us after the break. Everything from over there goes down as well over here as a clean, crisp, refreshing Budweiser. It's great weather, isn't it? of life you want to perform at the highest level. Demands you place on yourself can put your nervous system under pressure. That's where Baraka comes in. With its extra high charge of complex micronutrients, Baraka helps your body deal with this pressure so you can perform. Baraka, the high performance vitamin. people live longer in Italy is their diet, rich in fresh vegetables and olive oil. Or maybe it's their fans that keep them going. New Bertoli La Bruschetteria, made with the finest Italian vegetables and olive oil. I wish to welcome you to Lilliput. Once upon a time, readers all over the world enjoyed Jonathan Swift's classic tale, Gulliver's Travels. And now, Sunday Independent readers can enjoy a free DVD of the movie starring Richard Harris discovering the mysterious land of Lilliput. Children and adults everywhere will be enchanted with this magical big screen adventure. See how they all live happily ever after with your free Gulliver's Travels DVD this weekend, only in Ireland's leading newspaper, The Sunday Independent. Our baguettes taste so good because they're freshly baked in store every day. Cuisine de France, a feast for the senses. Boss Bottle, fragrance for men.
great atmosphere at Turner's Cross. Lots of tension too, as there always is in an FAI Cup semi-final. So near and yet so far to the big showpiece at Lansdowne Road. Who's it going to be? Cork City, Derry City, nil-nil. Second half commentary from Pat Morley and George Hamilton. We're all set to go. Derry City to kick off, attacking the shed end. No changes on either team. Same personnel as began the match. No goals. Now, is there to be a winner here, or will we have to do it all again? 300 miles away, on the banks of the Foyle on Wednesday night. The top two in the Aircom League, separated only by goal difference at the top of the table as the climax approaches. Battling for a place against either Drogheda or Bray on the 4th of December at Lansdowne Road. The crystal forward for Derry. Stretching, Malloy found his way to Hargan. One decisively by Beckett, by Bennett. It's one for O'Donovan to chase, and it's put out of play by McChrystal. He's had a very good, a very solid game, Mark McChrystal, coming into the back four tonight, and he's been very solid in everything he's done, and he's defended extremely well for Derry tonight, Mark McChrystal has. Campbell just couldn't quite get there. It's Gary Beckett. And a challenge there by Dan Murray, the captain of Cork City. Knew what he was doing. Wasn't going to run the risk that the defence might be exposed with him missing from it. He was a long way out of position as well, and I think he's probably um, probably made the right decision there for uh, Leighton and all as it was, because uh, Derry were on a quick break. with the free kick. Won by Bennett against Beckett. Forward by McChrystal. Cleared by Murray. Oh. McChrystal being chased by Bean. And he wasn't going to take the risk of uh, passing it back on the sticky surface. Very, very Clever short. Play. Clever play. And plenty of room outside in the um, stands here. O'Callaghan being beaten by McChrystal. Malloy dispossessed by O'Callaghan. A foul by O'Callaghan on Malloy. I think George O'Callaghan needs to relax his tiny bit now, George, because um, you know he's he's probably getting a bit frustrated as well out there because it's not the type of conditions that sort of suit George. You can see it here. He's just taking it on and he's he's pulling and you know it's it's a free out and handbags of ten paces really, isn't it? The uh, Derry player involved in that was Barry Malloy. George O'Callaghan was involved in that incident at the end of the first half when he got himself booked for charging in on David Ford, the Derry goalkeeper. Gary Beckett. That was Brennan helping it on, but now it's with Murphy. Murray to clear for Cork City and a throw into Derry City. to take this. There'll be another one for Derry City. And another football has uh, left the centre of the arena. Or well, at least that one stayed inside the confines of Turner's Cross. But still they cheer enthusiastically, even though they're at the wrong end for the Derry action in this half. Header has come out only as far as Deary. Back again it goes by Hargan. Malloy. 
O'Donovan. And another throw to Derry City. Again, Dan Murray's been very lucky there. I mean, he's come out and he's made a great block, but I think he's just hit him on the back of the head with a strike and goal from, um, from Kevin Deary. Deary shot, but uh, was blocked by Dan Murray. He comes his hit out, and he's just run out, and Dan has just thrown his back into him and just hit him on the back of the head, so... He blocked down a good shot there. Trying to through for O'Donovan, who acknowledges the idea was good, even if the execution was slightly off. Whistle in Cork's favour. I mean, a lot of credit must go to the players as well. I mean, they are trying to play football on the pitch, but, um, you know, we've spoken about it already. We've got to look at what the FBI decided to play the tournament in the last couple of weeks and probably one of the show pieces for Irish football. Well, not only that, but as you were saying at halftime, Cork City are going to have to defend to, to continue their quest for the title on this pitch, which at this time of year is unlikely to get any better before the end of the season. Absolutely, George. And I mean, the biggest thing as well is, I mean, more than likely both these teams will probably contest the final game of the season, more than likely and hopefully for the league. And more than likely in similar conditions. Absolutely. And it probably won't get any better either. Still going. Beans in there. Well, what a run that was by Neil Horgan, the right back. And Bean, the reserve striker, on the end of it, una unable to direct it onto the goal. Yeah, Neil Horgan's done very well here. He's knocked it out to Liam Kearney. He's blocked the great ball to the back post. Dennis Bean has peeled off. And in fairness to the goalkeeper, David Ford, he's come out and made it difficult for Dennis Bean here and probably just put him off a slight bit. And it's just gone over the top. Credit the goalkeeper here, George. I think he's done very, very well. You know, I mean, he hasn't got it, but he's made a miss. Carney profited from that uh, sortie up the right by Horgan. Well, here's where Derry have sort of looked um, very dangerous in the first half from set pieces. And, you know, here comes Peter Hutton. He's coming up again, and he's coming up very slowly again. And he's the guy that Cork City have started that matching now. There is Peter Hutton and Mark McChrystal, the two big guys. Well, McChrystal certainly the bigger of the two, but Hutton's no small man either. Here's the free kick from Brennan. And cleverly defended by Danny Murphy. Uh, Danny Murphy's done very, very well there. He's been very, very aware of what's around him, but um, that's probably Dirty's worst free kick in the game, I think, so far. by Hutton on O'Callaghan. Donovan. 
O'Donovan's cross. In goes O'Callaghan. Oh! Close call. Close call. Fantastic cross. And Joe Gambler's on really exceptionally well. He's not the great ball out to Roy O'Donovan. Joe's come into the box later. It's a quality cross to Roy. A lot of pace. A lot of quality here. George has made a great run. Very, very unlucky. He's just come out of the far post. I think David Ford had a cover though. But Cork certainly uh, having more success in getting forward since the break. O'Donovan. Morgan. Number 21 international, Roy O'Donovan. He's actually an out-and-out out striker, George, and he's um, playing in a role for uh, Damien Richards at the moment outside right, but he's um, he's a total striker, so he's just learning the trade as well outside right. A free kick has been awarded over there to Cork City. Driven in with pace, being a little touch, wouldn't come down for Murray. Beckett hitting it forward, tied it up by O'Brien. He's done an awful lot of unselfish work tonight, Colin O'Brien. He's made two very good blocks in the first half, and he's, he's chasing back all the time and picking up uh, Gary Beckett all the time. The ball is up from um, Derry back four. Bean won that. Callian puts it out of play. You'd have to say that uh, in the opening 10 or 11 minutes of the second half, in more Cork City than it was in the first. Absolutely, they've come up with a lot of um, more vigour and obviously Damien's had a few words. Gamble, and there's the cross, wonderful from O'Donovan. A wonderful two from the goalkeeper to read it. But what a ball by Gamble, and here he is on the ball again, intercepting the throw-out. And he's picked out O'Donovan again. It didn't work the first time, maybe it will the second. Horgan, O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan for Bean. Hutton defended it. And it's Deary now, and he's lost out to Gamble, but at the expense of a free kick, a handball. Correctly said, there's been a great passage of play there. Fantastic ball from Joe Gamble, and a great one touch from Roy. Across the goal, and back to Dan Forsey. Dennis Bean couldn't get across his, um, his marker. Tussle between uh, O'Callaghan and Hutton has ended in a goal kick. Very simple. Well, this was ball. Gamble for O'Donovan. Great ball by Joe Gamble. First touch from Roy O'Donovan. And keeper's done well again. I mean, he's commanding his area, David, for But I mean, it's a great first touch and a great cross from Roy O'Donovan. There's lots of quality out there, even if uh, they're having a, a tough time performing on the stage that's been set up for them tonight. Foul on Deary. Joe Callaghan once more. I think George needs to be a small bit weary here with what he's doing because uh, he's starting to create a few uh, little niggly things and if he keeps going, I don't think the referee will have any much more patience. Deary's free kick, and for once a poor delivery. Crystal attempted to retrieve it. Cork had uh, everybody back, just one man up, so it wasn't really the scope for a counter-attack. And now the same thing has happened to Derry, because Beckett's the only man forward at the moment. Who in the middle arriving now, Mark Farron. Derry City have won a throw, it was uh, well played by Gary Beckett. Yeah, definitely, Gary Beckett has, has chased the floor and ball there, and he's, he's won a throw, and then, you know, he's taking a bit of pressure off there, you got the, the present moment of time, but, you know, that's Gary Beckett here. Wrong. Everything says get back. And Harger throws. Some pushing in the box. 
I'm actually interested in what uh, Damien Hancock was up to there because as far as I'm aware there is no obligation on an opposing player to stand back from a throw in. Um, don't understand what's going on there George because I think Roy Donovan's entitled to stand on the line because you know it's, it's a throw in and it's um, unless there's a new rule after coming in that we haven't heard about. On by Bean. Bean in there again but uh, it was well played by Kieran Martin which enabled Derry to move forward. This is Mark Farron. Farron challenged by Murray. Sandwich of uh, Derry players on Colin O'Brien. Uh, the crystal penalised. And uh, fair enough. Foul. In circumstances like that, Damien Hancock has been strict as he must be. But he, in fairness to him, he's he's also been uh, been prepared to allow a bit of uh, a bit more physical. In, in the sense of the challenges, given that the pitch is uh, not doing the players any favours. Yeah, I think he's had to be a bit lenient because, um, you know, we hate going on about it, but the, the pitch is not helping him. Free kick taken by Murphy. Retrieved by O'Donovan. And Murphy was forward, but the ball just wouldn't come to him. Now, chance for Derry? No. Cleared by Devine. Deer. Martin just played it too far ahead of him. And uh, too physical there. And, uh, Brennan says, is it me you're giving the free kick against? But it is against Brennan, it's a free kick to Cork City. Murray with the free kick. Picked on by Bian. Carney, Gamble. Cleared away by Hargan. Gamble, little man, in to win it. Bennett. Callahan didn't quite contact. Hargan forward again. Nobody there for Derry. Throw it to Cork. Well, the Derry manager, with Paul Hegarty as assistant, former distinguished Derry player, are they already pondering the prospect of Wednesday night at the Brandywell? McCallion. Was that a foul? No, the referee interpreted that as the Derry player ran and turning into his man. It's gone out of play for throw. No, probably the teams are probably thinking of this about having a draw here, but it might be the best uh, for, for football going forward because, um, you know, in Derry, they probably be a very good pitch and should be underfoot to be very, very good for uh, attractive football. The last time Derry were at home to Cork, it ended 3 1 in their favour. Absolutely, and I mean, they're a very, very good team at home. And you know, it, I mean, as you say, they're the two top teams in the league, and obviously, Derry would like to take it back to the to the brandy well now. But uh, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a little bit twist and turn in this game yet before we finish. Bean. Interception, Martin has it forward again, it goes by McChrystal. Farron is in there, onto it comes Gary Beckett. Farron. That won't quite go out, or will it? Yes, it will. It's a goal kick to go. Terry's just had a little opening there. Yeah, leading to nothing. 
small bit of a half chance again it's Gary Beckett being instrumental and Farris he's, you know, he's just tried to swing his leg at it and get a shot on target but uh, again it's just bounced up and it's gone out for a uh, goal kick and We have some news of an upcoming Cork City substitution. Yes, George. Uh, Liam Carney will surely be leaving the fray, and Billy Woods is going to join the action. Pat McCord is warming up for Derry City as well. He's soon to join the action. We don't know yet who's going to come off for Derry. Thank you, Tony. I think it's probably a night for um, for Billy Woods. I think it's probably a good decision from um, Damien Richards to do that because I think Liam Carney is probably a tiny bit light for tonight with the way the, way the weather is. Um, I'm also not surprised that Pat McCord is um, warming up for Derry City. You know, he's a, he's a very, very good player. And see me, the reason that he wasn't played tonight was the pitch wasn't wide enough for him, but uh, he's a quality player. Right now, to gather that in, there's Liam Carney, who's going to be replaced very shortly. Very much an over the ground kind of player. Tonight it's uh, more through the mud. More it's through the mud, yeah. That's where most of the noise at Turner's Cross comes from. The shed. The Rebel Army. I think in fairness to the supporters, they've come out in force tonight and have been fantastic, you know, and you know they need something to cheer them on now and give them uh, warm the cockles a small bit. O'Callaghan pulled back by Malloy, eventually fouled by Malloy, and he gets the free kick. Uh, George has done very, very well there. I mean, he's, he's getting very frustrated. Sorry, I'm just trying to play around. I mean, the referee did give him the benefit of doubt, and he called it back, and now he's having a look, and he's putting the card out. Barry Malloy. For the tackle, or <laughs> not the tackle, the tug of George O'Callaghan. Yeah, I mean, Barry Malloy has been sticking to George Cannon all night, and in fairness to him, he's done a very, very good job. Here it is again, a bit of skill by George Cannon, here he's turning and twist. The man is holding on to him, and then Barry Malloy's come back, he's made another tackle there. A free kick to Cork City. Danny Murphy takes it. Good delivery. Up goes O'Callaghan at the back. But Ford, commanding goalkeeper, able to gather it in. So Donovan. Malloy stops him. Brennan. Tony O'Donoghue, Stephen O'Flynn as the tracksuit off on his way. Yes, indeed, Stephen O'Flynn. They've changed their mind at Derry Bench. Stephen O'Flynn has scored, of course, up at the Brandy, while a former Cork City player is coming on for Gary Beckett. But not just yet. Introduced as a substitute in that game, the last time they met. Dennis Bean has decided that uh, he wants to be involved in the free kick as opposed to awaiting its delivery into the penalty area. It's a long, long way out. Yeah, Dennis Bean is known to have a good strike off a, um, off a ball, so I'm, I'm sure he won't be um, looking anywhere else bar the, um, the goals here. Here's Bean. Well, he, had a, he had a look at the ground after he smacked it. In shades of David Beckham's penalty kick in Euro 2004 about that. Yeah, that was... Um, that was one of those ones, and I think that was even worse. So Billy Woods makes his entrance for Cork City. No stranger to the position, no stranger to the Cork City shirt. No, Liam Bill, Carney leaves. Yeah, Liam Carney leaves. I think it's just a bit too heavy, as we said already, for that. I think Billy Woods is um, a seasoned pro, and he worked very, very hard. I think what I'm a bit surprised about is Stephen Flynn coming on, if, is it, if it is Gary Beckett's coming off. Which is a surprise. I mean, I know Stephen Lafayette scored a few goals, but surprise that Gary Beck is coming off. 
I don't recall uh, Stephen O'Flynn having that, quite that colour hair when he scored the goal against Cork in August. I think maybe he might have known that he was uh, on television tonight and wanted to be recognised a bit more. But um, I'm quite surprised with the substitution. Substitution, and you know some of the Derry supporters are sort of booing in, um, in what's gone on with Gary Bennett coming off. But Stephen O'Flynn's a proven goal scorer. I'm sure he loved being back here. I'm sure he loved to score because he's um, he was released at the start of the season. It's cut out there by Bennett. So one substitution aside. 20 minutes to go. Here's O'Flynn. And in for O'Flynn, a nudge one towards goal. Gathered in by O'Brien, by, by Devine. <laughs> he's only just committed the, the game and he's been involved two or three touches and that header saved by Michael Devine. I'm sure he'll want to make his mark here tonight. I mean, you know, he's going to get the treatment from the shed, obviously, being a former Cox City player. But, uh, you know, it was a good header. Made McDevine be honest and make a save. Billy Woods. Once yes, again, it's good ball into the box. You know, Stephen McFinney's got a pass and he made McDevine be honest and make a, you know, a very easy save. Pressure on Gamble. Murphy and no Flynn's gone right through him. Free kick to Cork City. Uh, you could say that he was fired up. Yeah, he's definitely fired up. But uh, again, I think Danny Murphy is. Um, Danny Murphy's made a, a nice little um, a professional little touch there as well. And I think he's made a bit more over than it actually was. I think Jay Stephen Flynn is a bit honest there, and he's, he's meant to, uh, to try and win the ball. So here it is again. I mean, he's dived in. You know. Cool. He's, one minute on the pitch, one header on target, one yellow card. Good start. Pian just lost out to Hutton, but the Cork have it back again. O'Callaghan in possession. O'Callaghan and O'Donovan. O'Callaghan uh, unable to reach it again. And so now it's Deary. Deary over the top. Devine comes out of his goal. He's there waiting when it arrives. Interception by Malloy. Brennan. Callahan arrived at pace to win it back. Now it's O'Brien. Not a good ball for Woods. Woods forward. And it's Bean against Hutton. And Hutton just got there first. Bean still challenging. Hutton's got it away, but only as far as Billy Woods. Hargan cuts it out for Derry. O'Flynn. Time of the way, it's Bennett. It was an offside, and uh, Cork City protest that there was an advantage that could have been played. I think Peter Hutton again there showed his season professionalism and going down the wing because he looked as if he was caught for pace, but uh, a little slight pull of the jersey got away for it and um, cleared very well when they were under a bit of pressure. from Danny Murphy. Substitutions now coming uh, thick and fast. There's another one coming for Tony O'Donoghue to report upon. Yeah, because I'm not coming on, George, but Alan Murphy is, and he's coming on for Mark Farron, Derry's leading goal scorer. So another change in the Derry City front line. Alan Murphy for Mark Farron. Thank you. Mind you, uh, the stage you were in standing on the pitch before the game wearing a smart pair of football boots. I think you might have been able to uh, make a contribution tonight. I wonder, did anyone get a shot of that? Our sports editor in the boots. 
I think what we're seeing is, I mean, Stephen Kenny knows after taking off his two um, main strike force, so, you know, maybe he is thinking about the Brandywell on Wednesday. Is that how it's looking? Layoff by Bean, O'Callaghan. On for O'Donovan. Stopped by Hutton, but it's back with O'Callaghan. Gamble wants it. Cork moving forward with Menace. O'Brien. O'Donovan trying to find Bean. Gamble's in there again. Helps it on to Murphy. Cork doing really well in this phase. O'Callaghan goes down. It's cleared by McCallion. It's back again by Murray. This time it's the head of Malloy. Onto it comes Horgan. Horgan for Bean. Bean's cross. Came to O'Callaghan, just rebounded from him. Gamble got there. And O'Flynn knocks him over. O'Flynn for Derry. And now Alan Murphy's first touch. And Murphy with a shot. They're always going away from the goal. Yes, Alan Murphy's just picked up outside the box here to strike, and it's a small bit wide, but I mean, himself and Stephen O'Flynn have come on, and, you know, Stephen O'Flynn has put himself about, he's getting a bit different, and maybe this is Steve, um, Stephen Kenny's um, idea to bring a big guy up front to sort of get into the mud and get stuck in and have little Alan Murphy running off and hopefully get a bit of a breaking ball. Murphy. Hargan. Stopped by Horgan. So Brian. Now Brennan. Murphy. Trying to cut through, just couldn't manage it. The other Murphy corks. Danny, the left back, and now a chance. It was really a, a snapshot that Kieran Martin had. Might or might not have come off. One of those 50-50 efforts. It's a half a chance. I mean, it's knocked in by Barry Malloy. Quick, quick turn by Kim Martin, and he's, he's unlucky. But again, Mick Devine had it all uh, very easily covered. Danny Murphy, Neil Horgan. Flag up on the side, George. It's obviously offside, and the referee hasn't picked it up yet, but I'm sure he'll see it soon enough. He's still there with the flag up. Now, he, now he's seen it. It took a while. I think it was uh, Derry City defenders who were advising to have a look. Yeah. they push the players forward and Hutton takes the free kick in the end coming to nothing it's Malloy and uh, Gamble effectively won it back O'Callaghan has run into uh, Deary, who's injured himself in the process, the game goes on. Murphy. O'Callaghan, overhead towards Murphy. And McCallion comes free. Deary's still down. He sliced his clearance, and now the referee will check to see what is ailing Kevin Deary. Just a little toss it there, and George Cannon has come in and just knocked the ball away. He's trying to do with his skill, and Deary's just caught him here. And he's just probably just injured himself in the back of his Achilles tendon there, and he's just gone down. You know, it's, it's just one of those things that happen again. Yes, 
Argon. Put out a play by Alan Bennett. More news from the touchline, Tony O'Donoghue. Yes, Paddy McCord is about to join the action at last. Uh, he'll be coming on for Killian Brennan, so Derry's third substitution. Thank you. Killian Brennan. The first corner of the second half. It's not a corner, it's a throw in. It would have been the first corner of the second half. O'Brien, the header away, Gamble completes the job. McChrystal. Alan Murphy. Hutton, over the top, down goes Brennan. A legitimate challenge that we can keep contested. Horgan. O'Flynn. Brennan takes over. Martin. And out for the throw. A little bit of uh, case of the force being with Derry just now. They're going to send on Pat McCourt. Brennan, he's worked very, very hard tonight, but I mean, they're bringing on a very, very good and quality player in Pat McCourt. Maybe the conditions might ensue that tonight, but it only needs one bit of magic to turn a cup tie, and um, maybe Pat McCourt is the uh, the person to do this, because he, he is an exceptionally good player. Well, he's going right over to take the throw-in, his first task in the game. Of course, that uh, has the effect of running the clock down as well, doesn't it? So, is this Derry seeking the draw? Here's McCourt. He's learning how treacherous the surface is with his first genuine involvement. I think he's just seen it straight away there, you know. He's done what he naturally does best and try and cut inside the player. Normally the ball is there, but it's, it's just behind him and it's, there's nothing he can do about that. Court. So, well, by Billy Woods. <laughs> Billy Woods. A bit of a tangle that's sorted out by Murray. O'Callaghan. Danny Murphy. Murphy. That's a free kick to Derry City. Kevin Deary picking himself up somewhat gingerly. I think Danny Murphy's just a tiny bit late there. Um, and again, Danny Murphy is all the fox the referee with the, the late challenge, you know. Here it is again. A small little challenge. He's had a few of them tonight, Danny Murphy, so he's probably considered himself lucky that as he hasn't been booked. Here, McCourt trying to retrieve it. He didn't quite get there. It's a goal kick. <laughs> Crystal had gone forward for that, and he seems to have injured himself, and the shake of the head seems to suggest that he can't continue, and if that's the case, Derry are in a spot of bother because they've used up all three substitutes. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's it's an interesting thing because I mean he looks in a tiny bit of pain here, and you know it's it's a small bit dangerous. If I mean if they have, if they're down to ten men for the last five minutes here, they don't really want that, you know. Tony uh, O'Donoghue has used him another change. Yes, well Dennis Bean wasn't expecting to play in this game, but he's played for quite a lot of it before the match. Neil Fenn passed a late fitness test. Damien Richardson chose to leave him on the bench. He gets his chance to shine for the last few minutes. Thank you. 
I think Dennis Bean has worked very, very hard tonight. I mean, he's, he's ran into the corners and done an awful lot of uh, thankless job. I mean, now Neil Finn is on. He was obviously struggling with an ankle injury for the last couple of weeks. And uh, as I said, the same with Pat McCord. I mean, Neil Finn is a quality player. Oh, but Crystal looks as if he's going to be fit to continue. This is what happened. He just went down rather awkwardly. His legs seemed to buckle under him. And he'll hobble back. And uh, no doubt, continue. Certainly be hoping he continues. There's Malloy, the court. Oh, O'Brien. Headed away by McChrystal, he's perfectly okay. Sort of pinging right in there. Bennett, O'Brien, Malloy, oh here's a chance, Alan Murphy, oh he didn't find the shot when he needed to. It's a chance, it's a big chance and at the time of the game that ball goes in the back and that's game over. How crucial could that be, that for once the Cork City defence was split open and Alan Murphy on as a substitute. Couldn't find the power of the pace to beat McDevine. Yeah, it's a great ball through by Barney Malloy and Alan Murphy for the good side. McDevine covered it. A let off for Cork. Looking for Neil Fenn, cut out by Hutton. The head of Murray. One by Deary. Danny Murphy. Side against O'Flynn. But yeah. Oh, that's a, a, a wasted free kick. Throw it to Derry City. Pushing there, a free kick now for Derry City. Time for uh, your air, your uh, man of the match, the Carlsberg man of the match, Pat. Yeah, I think it's you know it's obviously a difficult decision tonight because um, it's, it's been a tough tough conditions and a lot of players have played well, but because of um, I think his overall dis distribution and marshalling defence tonight, I'll probably give it to Peter Hutton because uh, you know he's created a few chances himself and he's snuffed the Cork City attack out. And, uh, congratulations for Peter Hutton and a flash at the goal from Stephen O'Flynn. And the goal kick is the outcome. Yeah, it's, it's another half chance there, you know. I mean, the ball has come back and Peter, uh, Stephen O'Flynn has just um, snapped on it. And, you know, he's probably uh, a bit unlucky because if he keeps these things down, he can score from there. By Woods, man of the match, Hutton. That will do, safe as houses. Been very professional tonight. He's worked very, very hard, and he's marshaled his defence, and he's led his troops into battle. And it was a battle tonight. It's working out. It looks like it's going to go back to the brand new on Wednesday night. If it does go to that, uh, you'll be able to follow every twist and turn of this cup tie because the replay, if there is one, will be live on RTE2. This has come out to Neil Horgan. Foul. No, referee says no. Back again by Murray. It's Hargan. Horgan. And now Donovan. Stopped by Hargan. Okay. 
think a lot of the fans behind the um, St. Andens goal are getting frustrated because they thought there was a corner kick, but it, it definitely came back off um, Roy Donovan and, and Sean Hagen has done very, very well marshalling him tonight. Well, they're encouraged by what they've seen. And they'll have five more minutes to enjoy because the referee is adding on four extra minutes. It's still time for this to be won. Deary. Fed in there challenging. of Joe Gamble. Uh, chance for Cork City. They've uh, eight in or around the box as Danny Murphy takes the free kick. Fenn. City player brings down Neil Fenn. It's a penalty to Cork City, and this could be decided by the kick that denied Cork last time Derry won in this ground. A penalty. Derry saved it then through Alan Goff. Will they save it tonight? I'm sure the fans won't want ground out there, but you know, the ball's come across. Neil Fenn has done an absolute fantastic touch and turn on the ball here. Different class by Neil Fenn. Great touch, great turn, and that's a penalty. Definite penalty. No doubt about it. Three years ago, it was John O'Flynn against Alan Goff. Goff saved, Derry won 1-0, and went on to beat Shamrock Rovers in the final. Tonight, it's David Ford against George O'Callaghan. And surely, if anything is going to decide this match, it's most likely to be this. Well, this is what is going to come down to a set piece or a free kick. Three years ago, it was, um, as you say, Alan Goff versus... Um, John O'Flynn, John O'Flynn went to the keeper's right, keeper saved it. I think if I was George, I think he'd hammered straight down the middle of the goal. George O'Callaghan with the chance of putting Cork City into the FAI Carlsberg Cup Final. He's done it! Different quality, different class, brilliant penalty, top corner, and you know, it sums it all up. I mean, he's worked very, very hard tonight, George. Fantastic goal, and the crowd has gone absolutely ballistic here. Derry City's marvellous 25 match unbeaten run now hangs by a thread and if you're going to lose one what I want to lose the one that could put you into the cup final what a terrific penalty you can't say that even if you go the right way it's in the perfect spot George O'Callaghan who scored on the goals against Sligo earlier in the cup puts it almost beyond Derry's reach different class I mean he stepped up and that's as cool as you like penalty and as they say all the great players were 10 well, I know you had a tough task picking him out of the match. I think if the man of the match had been wearing a green shirt, he's the man it would have been. But what a wonderful, wonderful penalty kick that he took after a match in which he experienced all manner of frustration. But yep. it now looks like uh, they can stay on Lee side on Wednesday night and think ahead to December the 4th and the FAI Cup final. Absolutely. City. Derry City really up against it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you're looking back to the game and you're picking the man of the match, you know, you're, you're saying Peter Hutton and George O'Callaghan to, to see who'll be the two. And, uh, I mean, obviously he's picked before the, the thing is it's decided, but, I mean, in fairness to George, when you come at the hour, come at the man. I mean, he's worked very, very hard, stepped up, great penalty, and, you know, there's not much more you can say about that. Well, it's been a bit of a bogey team for Derry City, Cork City. Only two wins out of their last ten meetings. But now, is this seventh straight win run about to come to an end in the greatest heartbreak imaginable? And how ironic that it should be Stephen O'Flynn, the former Cork City player who committed the foul, that could very well have put Cork City 
into the FAI Cars World Cup final. Yeah, I think it's a small bit ironic for Steve Loughlin. You know, a couple of weeks ago he was the hero up and there by scoring the goal. But you can see it that you know a lot of the people here and they're getting frustrated frustrating out there and the court is getting very frustrated with things that are going on. The top two is going to be booked. Booked for uh, overreaction. The top two of the country separated by goal difference only at the moment. First and second in the league. And it's the top team in the Aircom League. Leading a goal difference with uh, the game in hand that has got the whip hand here. This could be the last kick of the game, maybe not. But there won't be much more after it. And there's only been one goal. And that looks like the goal that will send Cork City into the FAI Cup final. Frustrated by this very opposition three years ago at this very same stage. And it's probably going to be ironic as well for Damien Richardson because the last time he was in the cup final, he was beaten as a manager by Cork City, so I'm sure he's delighted to bring him back. Well, he's back at Lansdowne Road in December, thanks to this man, George O'Callaghan. Scenes of unadulterated delights on Lee side. Disappointment for Stephen Kenny, his team finally beaten after 25 matches unbeaten and seven straight wins that have taken them back up into title contention. But the one trophy they won't be contesting this season is the FAI Cup because Damian Richardson's Cork City is into the final on December the 4th against either Drogheda United or Bray Wanderers in a game played on a glue pot and decided by a penalty kick correctly awarded for a foul by the former Cork City player Stephen O'Flynn on the substitute Neil Fenn. Well might George O'Callaghan be delighted. He's gone down to salute the shed, the uh, Mutual Admiration Society, the fans of their star man, the star man of the most amazing fans, Cork City Shed. This victory on Lee side tastes very special. Yeah, I think it's very, very special. I think the last time something like this happened down here was the semi-final when Cork City beat Pats and it was a 1-0 win and they went on to lose the cup final. But I think now you've got to look at it and say, you know, fair play to Derry, made a great spectacle of it. Fair play to Peter, Peter Hutton for making a good spectacle with his team. You know, he's still there uh, clapping his supporters. But as I said already, come with the hour, come with the man and George O'Callaghan was the man. What a night for Cork in Cork. They're in the FAI Carlsberg Cup final, thanks to George O'Callaghan's penalty. The final score, Cork City 1, Derry City 0. It's going to be a long drag back up to the foil. We'll be back with match analysis right after this. In 2003, Australia won both tests to take the International Rules Series on their home turf. Last year, Ireland were cheered on to victory twice over by an ecstatic Croke Park crowd. Can they take that passion down under and beat the Aussies again? Australia v Ireland, tonight at 9.45 on RTE2. It's a long road. This is Prairie Wind, the long-awaited new album from the legendary Neil Young. The final instalment in the classic Harvest Trilogy. It's been hailed by critics as Neil Young at his best. Neil Young, Prairie Wind, out now. Back in 1873, a man traveled to this cold, inhospitable place. He wasn't looking for gold or land. He was looking for the purest Rocky Mountain spring water. So he could make a beer to quench the mightiest thirst. And that man's name was Coors. Coors Light, a taste born high in the Rocky Mountains. Intensive Care, the new album from Robbie Williams, out now.
Well, the celebrations have really started in earnest here. Cork City through to the FAI Cup final at Tolka Park on the 4th of December. Drogheda or Bray will be their opponents. Let's hear from the Carlsberg man of the match. A very disappointed Peter Hutton of a very disappointed Peter Hutton of Derry. Uh, Peter Hutton is the Carlsberg FAI Man of the Match and he's been presented with his trophy by David McSweeney of Carlsberg. Congratulations, Peter. A lovely trophy and all, but hardly going to make up for the disappointment of losing a cup semi-final. Of course not. Uh, we're bitterly disappointed, especially in the manner we lost the game. But uh, that's football. Sometimes it can be tough, but uh, we just have to pick ourselves up from it and get on with it. How important will this be in the title race? Is that a psychological win for Cork as well as a semi-final victory? Not at all. Uh, there's still a lot of football to be played in the league, and uh, we're going to rally after this. You know, I think it'll be a test of character now for the boys, and I'm sure they'll stand up and be counted. Heartbreaking to, to lose a game so late in the game, and, and to a penalty as well, because you created lots of chances. We did. In, fin in fairness, I thought it was a very tough game. Both sides uh, cope well with the awful conditions of the pitch and that, but uh, it was a typical cup semi-final, but uh, chances both ends and that, and both teams sort of played their hearts out, and uh, unfortunately uh, there was a winner the night, and I think to be a fair draw probably would have been a fair result. Well, the dream of the treble is over for Derry, but the double's still on, I suppose, because the, the league's still very much in your sights. Well, we're just looking forward now to the next game. We're not talking anything about doubles or trebles or anything like that. We're just looking forward to the next week's game. OK, Peter, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Damien Richardson is here as well, the Cork City manager. Congratulations, Damien, and uh, well done. It's a competition, the FAI Cup, that you particularly enjoy. What a way to win the semi-final. Yes, indeed. I mean, I have to compliment Derry City because they made an enthralling game out of it. And I think if you look at the quality on, on view this evening, bearing in mind the, the extreme conditions they played under, had to perform under, I think it's a great credit to, to the both football clubs, first of all, and to the Arkham League. I mean, Derry are a very, very good so on the verge of becoming something very special. I feel Cork City are the same. We know Shelburne are of similar status. If we get another couple of teams there, we then start to have a league of consequence. We can extend the appeal and extend the audience. We saw what Tony's Cross is like tonight. It's the best ground in the League of Ireland at the moment because the passion is here. We go to the Brandywell and you get something like the same. Things are happening. You must have thought you were going to the Brandywell next Wednesday with a replay into the 94th minute. Yes, indeed. But cup football, I always believe in cup football. I always believe something is happening. There's always a sting in the tail. There's always some, a surprise around the corner. The beauty of the game was tonight that it was two very professional sides. And whilst there were chances that we had chances in the first half, Derry had some in the second half, it was going to be that one little, one little thing that changed the game. And I didn't want to travel. I didn't want, we've done enough travelling this year. So to get that equaliser at such a late stage was a great pep up for us and, and a killer for Derry because there's no time to recover. Well, congratulations on the FAI Cup final for this year. Best of luck to you, Damien. Thanks for joining us. There's the shed end, they're still there, they're still singing at Turner's Cross. That'll go on for quite a while. Damien Richardson talking to Tony O'Donoghue here at the Cross. Felix and Roddy with me. Felix, your thoughts on that? What a dramatic finish to this semi-final. Well, it's... The only thing that's predictable about football is it's some predictability, yeah. as you would say. Uh, I thought that over the 90 minutes, I thought Derry were the better cope with the conditions better, very fit side. Apart from the 10 minute spell just after half time when I thought Cork yeah. played decent and were okay. But they were there for the taking tonight uh, and Derry didn't take their opportunity. And they'll be very disappointed with tonight because Cork were there and uh, they should have taken them back to the Yeah. Roddy, your thoughts on it. Damien mentioned in the interview about the unpredictability, the sting in the tail. Well, it wasn't that unpredictable in the second half. I mean, the first half was scrappy, it was a set piece game. The second half, Cork came out and they diverted back. Maybe there was uh, too much emphasis placed on the surface, the pitch, the way it was. I mean, we've seen, you know, bad pitches, but good teams play good football. And then Cork came out in the second half, and right from the off, they started to knock the ball around. They, they you know, they ignored the conditions, rather, and created a couple of chances. And I felt as the game had done, they dominated. And, you know, okay, it was, you know, a penalty at the end, given away by a striker, which happens. But I think I think overall, the second half, Cork, you know, deserved it. Let's have a look at the penalty incident and the conversion of it by George O'Callaghan. Ironic as well, a former Cork City player, Stephen O'Flynn, who gave it away, Felix. Well, I think I said to you, um, Donna, with about seven minutes to go, there's going to be a hero or a villain. Yeah, he did. And, and unfortunately, it's young O'Flynn, as God has said, it's a forward tackle, stonewall penalty. And uh, young O'Flynn will be gutted. Particularly as he's a cork lad as well. Well, if, if you look at that instance as well, Felix, I mean, uh, Finn taking the ball, took a play, play with the penalty. He turned himself away, rolled his body, and he got the leg in, and he got the penalty. If you look at it there, I've just seen it in the replay. Finn knew exactly what he was doing. He's only on the pitch a while. He's a fantastic touch on him. Ball coming out, so he pulls in the box, 
and avoids the tackling and gets himself a penalty. George O'Callaghan, clinical finish. And, you know, I mean, Felix is disappointed. He's a dame, I understand that. But overall, you know, at the end of the day, uh, second half, Cork shaded. But Derry still have the league to look forward to. It's not the end of the world. They wake up in the morning and say, OK, we're out of the cup, but yeah. we can still win a league championship. And maybe they could be back here the last day in the season. Could be a different ball. A, a, draw, a draw would have been a fair result from what we saw there. Right? Well, well you know, fair no, no, nothing's fair in a football field. It's over the first <laughs> period of time. Derry, Derry could have won the game in the first period of time. I thought at halftime, Derry were going to win the game. If, if Cork didn't address the situation, Cork did. They got that balance right. They looked a little bit shapeless in the first half. They got it right. They played it round. And then Derry stepped back a little bit. You know, no, oh, a penalty. It, 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 yeah. People, have, like you said, the heroes and villains. The hero was Finn. You know, well, don't go for cheating. He didn't cheat. He took the ball well. He played but for it. it. And you know, Finn, as you see many times, Felix, centre backs going to defend or centre forwards are a disaster. Yeah. I, 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 the one thing I would say in terms of because Cork are home, the onus is on them to try and win the match here. They don't want to go to the Brandywell on Wednesday. Sure. There were times, as Roddy and I were saying, they were leaving themselves one against one Absolutely. with Mark Farn, yes. which yeah. was crazy. Yeah. And, and they were going for it a wee bit more uh, than Derry were. And I think maybe Derry at times settled for the nil-nil and we're hoping to get back to the Brandywell. Yeah. And sometimes when that happens, it's amazing the way the gods smile on you. That's right. one way or the other. What do you think, boys? Will there be a wider implication for, for the, the, the race for the league title? Yes. Derry, we're talking, tre we're talking treble before no, they no. came here this evening. They've got the league cup, the treble is gone. Cork could still have the double, of course. Are there implications Derry, for the, the league Derry race? players weren't talking treble. The media were pumping I will, up I blame the media It's now, a massive right. psychological <laughs> boost for Cork. It is a massive psychological sure. boost. But, well, you know, Derry will wake up tomorrow morning they still have a league to go for I think they'll be in there I think we'll go the last game of the season and I looking at Derry we played them last week they were very very good yeah. really good tonight you know we, let's be honest they were nicked a couple of minutes to go I yeah. think Derry could win that title boys thanks very much indeed Roddy Collins and Felix Seeley it's been great to have the lads here with us at Turner's Cross a dramatic finish to this first FAI Carlsberg Cup semi-final Cork City thanks to a penalty given away by a former Cork City player and a Cork man Stephen O'Flynn converted by George O'Callaghan they are through to the final and George O'Callaghan is really enjoying this took a lot of bottle to stand up and take that penalty he was ice cool put it into the back of the net the shed end of Turner's Cross they're still here they're still singing they won't want to leave tonight disappointment for Derry who will Cork City play in the final at Talca on the 4th of December will it be Bray will it be Drogheda you can find out with us live on Sunday as we're at United Park in Drogheda but for now it's Cork's night from all of us here bye bye Forget about your past